Hi, this is Michael Fisher for SavingAndInvesting.com and one of the things that we've talked about is monetary policy and economics in general. And in that context, one of the key players in all of this is the, our central banks. And in this video I'd like to discuss what central banks do. A central bank is the monetary authority of a country, meaning the one bank in a country that's responsible for administering monetary policy, issuing currency, and assisting in making the banking system work by also holding the deposits of other member banks and we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Examples of central banks include the Federal Reserve System which is often re referred to as the Federal Reserve or Fed, the European Central Bank, the Bank of England, the re Bank of Canada, the Banco Central do Brazil, the Reserve Bank of Australia, the Reserve Bank of India, etc. etc. Different central banks have different specific goals, but central banks in general have a number of common objectives that they fulfill uh, in the context of uh, providing service to that country and, and working with the government. Um, and these include things like maintaining price stability, in other words, ensuring that there's not too much inflation or deflation, and in fact, there are a large number of central banks that set that as their main overriding objective, in some cases almost a singular objective. Additional things that central banks aim to do are keep the economy growing steadily and to make sure it does not overheat or stall, to be the bank for the government, to support the economic policies of the government, particularly through monetary policy, to step in if there's a banking panic or crisis by acting, for example, as a lender of last resort, to implement monetary policy as mentioned, i.e. to adjust interest rates um, and to control the supply of money in an economy, um, to, to monitor the banking system, in some cases also to supervise the banking system, to stabilize the banking system if necessary, and to mo manage a country's foreign reserves and or even their gold reserves. Um, it's different from other banks in that it's the only bank that can issue currency and set monetary policy. It's also either owned by the government or not a private institution in the sense that it exists to make a profit for its shareholders or it could be referred to as a public body. Central banks are often independent of the government like in the US, Europe and the UK and they have and, and in these countries, keeping inflation under control is the primary objective. So what do central banks do to, what do the central banks like the Fed, the European Central Bank, the Bank of England do to achieve these objectives and to work with the government in uh, putting through monetary policy and ensuring uh, and working with the government to ensure that, an economy, that there's not too much inflation, that the economy grows steadily and so forth and to work for the welfare of the nation. Well, they undertake what are known as open market operations, which means, um, which means where they buy bonds in the market, which by buying the bonds they release cash back into the financial system, or by selling bonds into the market, in which case cash is taken out of the financial system in order to buy these bonds. Um, they also set short-term interest rates. They set interest rates that banks can borrow at from the central bank. And they try to also influence in the rate that banks borrow at from each other. And it's these short-term interest rates that then feed through the economic system in two ways. One, um, the, the rate that, banks, that the banks can borrow at affects the rates that others can borrow at for short-term rates. They, the short-term rates affect the short-term rates that individuals and companies can borrow at. But additionally, by adjusting the short-term rates, and by making statements regarding future short-term rates, they can also have some influence over longer-term rates because longer-term interest rates are a combination of short-term interest rates and interest rates th through to the future, i.e. a three-year interest rate is a combination of the one-year interest rate plus the interest rate from one year to two years, from two years to three years. So by, influ by affecting short-term interest rates, i.e. very short-term interest rates, overnight interest rates, and by making statements potentially about future short-term interest rates, central banks can have impact on what medium and longer-term rates are, even though these are ultimately set by the market. And all of these interest rates clearly affect the cost of money to consumers and to companies, and thereby can affect inflation by either 
cutting the amount of the availability of capital to borrow to to invest and to to borrow and making capital more expensive or by putting more capital into the system making borrowing cheaper putting more cash into the system and therefore stimulating the economy and potentially creating some inflationary pressures the central bank also affects the amount of capital that banks have to hold with the central bank known as the required reserve ratio and by changing the amount of money that the banks that a bank has to hold with the central bank the central bank can affect the amount of money that the banks lend out to other, to consumers and to corporations as mentioned and to companies and that of course affects the economy and asset prices central banks might also play a role in the foreign exchange market and in some cases it's also the central bank system that has responsibility for supervising the bank's banking system or parts of the banking system so overall, whereas the government has the responsibility for setting policies, laws, and other initiatives for, for the well-being ideally of the country and its populations and voters, and linked to that determining spending and taxation plans, and in other words, setting fiscal policy, it's the central bank that although independent of the government, handles many of the country's banking functions, like setting monetary policy, controlling the issue and supply of currency, regulating the banking system in some cases and protecting consumers and corporations from banking crises and that's what central banks do and very much linked to that is the concept of course of monetary policy